most of our nation has woken up on 7 October, put Palestinians back there, two-state solution, all these things, it's dead. They'll come again, and they'll do worse than on the 7th of October. So it's not the first massacre of Jews in the streets. Uh, please, uh, have a listen, for 2,000 years it's been happening. So what's new? God wants to settle this land as he promised Abram with innumerable masses of people that wants goodness. And his faith is goodness. It, is, it really does boil down to good versus evil. There's no room for neutrality. If you're unwilling to side with the IDF and Israel, your only other option are genocidal terrorists. Shalom and welcome back to Right Side In. I'm your host, Jeffrey Ben Zane. Thank you so much for joining us. We are 100% viewer supported, so please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video with everybody you know. You can also find us on the web at americansagainstatestatesolution.org, and you can also find us on X. All those links will be provided in the description below. We have a very special guest joining us today, Israeli researcher and author, Ovadi Avrahami. He is here to discuss the solutions for the impossible or what Gaza should look like the day after the war, certainly not a topic without controversy. Ovadia, please, welcome. Shalom, shalom, welcome, thanks for tuning in. And uh, yes, uh, we'd, we'd love to share some ideas with you. Thanks for listening. Ovadia, you recently published a mission statement to a telegram group titled Seeking Solutions for the Impossible and what Gaza should look like the day after the war. If you could, sir, please describe to our viewers what the purpose and the vision is for that mission statement and how you see those events unfolding as we move closer to the completion of this war. Yeah, it is a question that I see in the news all the time. In fact, worldwide, uh, uh, politicians are making statements and demanding Israel withdraw and Israel uh, it's taking steps to to control the uh, what has been going on and the killing of innocent Jews, uh, citizens, let's call it that way. And uh, everybody's asking the question, after Gaza, what then? And the whole issue becomes very important because it, as we've seen with the 7th of October catastrophe, the barbarian uh, murdering of and slaughtering and mishandling of, of civilians by Hamas that has uh, shattered the world, a certain, certain uh, section, a great section of it. We don't know what percentage really, but you can see it in every country that there are uh, people, governments, nations siding with Israel. And of course, within those nations, they are also siding uh, with with Hamas and 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 uh, promoting Palestinian uh, promotions and their views and the war they want to stop the war while Israel is defending itself so it's a question that is very much up in the air the government of Israel from the reports we get they certainly they state uh, uh, one side uh, but of course it's also in in the government in the Knesset. The parliament, uh, it is, it is, uh, it's not everybody that thinks the same way. So it is an enormous question going on. What happens after Gaza and to stop this from being repeated, this murder, this slaughter, the barbaric slaughter? And it's not just for Israel, because world, wherever nation you are, please take note, it's coming your way. And in fact, the uh, Islam states that, that um, after the, the Shabbat people, which is the Jews, seventh day Shabbat people, after the Sabbath people, it's the Sunday people. And we see it in many countries. We see countries like South Africa even turning totally against Israel, siding with, with Hamas, 
in other words, promoting it. And yes, unfortunately, in Israel, in, in South Africa, there's a lot of genocide going on there, killing farmers just because they're whites and living on a farm. That is never discussed. But it's only Israel that is is, is at blame. So we are going to talk and try. We, don't, we cannot, we don't have the solution. If we have it, they're not going to listen to us. But yes, that is the whole purpose of speaking to people like yourselves who ever listens to this video and let's awaken the world to an alternative idea. And this alternative idea, by the way, comes from the Bible. Uh, might not make every listener happy, but uh, just a quick uh, review there too. Israel today is 70 years old, 75 years it's going since its rebirth re-establishment in 1948 coming out of the as one of the aftermaths of the of the second world war uh, the the country is only 75 years old that was predicted 3000 years ago by the prophets of the bible speaking from on behalf of god and those same prophecies also speak forward, not just about the re-erection or rebirth of Israel. It speaks about things like what's happening now with Gaza. Gaza brought this problem to the entire world. Every nation is involved. Read the newspapers. Look on your streets. Look at the at the petitions going on. The siding with 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 uh, Hamas with Palestinians. In other words, if you side with them, you're saying kill the Jews, take them out. So, uh, but we'll talk about that all along. So this this vision of of what to do with with Gaza, what should Israel do with Gaza after the war? Uh, obviously, it's it's going to take millions or hundreds of millions of dollars to rebuild, repopulating Gaza after the war, whether that's with Jews or with pro-Israeli non-Jews. You know, we we seen reports just this week in the news that Defense Minister Gallant has has promised um, the U.S. Uh, Department of State that there would in no way, shape, or form be the resettlement of Israelis in, in Gaza, and that that resettlement would, would absolutely not occur. So how, how do you gain supporters on the ground, um, you know, for this vision when the Israeli government itself seems to be positioning to the complete opposite? Okay, let me come in on that. You mentioned the, the Minister of Defense. That is only one voice and certainly is backed by people in, in the government. And remember, at the moment, Israel has got not the normal government going, they've got the war government going, which is specially selected wider than the elected government, which was uh, for the first time in long, if not first time in history, a righteous government or leading very much right. Uh, so the war government has included leftists also, uh, including the previous prime minister, for instance. Uh, so uh, the question is, and it, it, sorry, but it brings me back to the the fact that we we are entering a biblical vision here. Uh, again, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable to the uh, to us, I suppose. Uh, the, the major part of even the Israel government, although they they Jews, but they are not biblically centered, prophetically centered, and even those that are, uh, in short, there is what they call the Zionist spirit, and the Zionist spirit is really it's never uh, presented like that, even by its opposers, but it is really the biblical prophecy. Uh, the Zionist spirit means. Take the land that I've given you, and it's God speaking, which he promised to Abram, and his promise included uh, innumerable, innumerable masses of non-Jewish nations and kings. Will He took Abram on a mountain 20 kilometers from my home here, and if you turn on your heels there, 360 degrees from the top of this mountain, you can see all directions. And God said to Abraham there, this is the land I promised to you. And it, he didn't just refer to Jews, uh, it, it, to the whole world, nations included. So this is what it's all about. What is happening in Israel today? Why is it reborn? Uh, and seven, only 75 years old, 
but it comes originally from Abraham's time, some 3,500 years. And it's back at, for 2,000 years, it was thrown out of the country by God, but with a promise, I'll bring you back. The Jews are back. They are raising, they've re-erected Israel to top 10 status on many platforms, technology and science and medic, medic etc. Uh, in, in 70 years, please. It is biblical. It's it's what was written. I can give you a hundred prophecies from the scriptures that you can go and read. Read it like a child. It tells you God says, I will re-erect this land. That is what Gaza is all about. And that is why uh, it seems that, if not it seems, it's quite clear that God presented on the 8th of October, uh, after that horrible day, this was flashed in, in as an option to the whole world, choose which side you want to go on. Do you want to back Hamas, which incidentally is the Hebrew word in the Bible for evil? Do you want to back evil? And they've proven their evil by the way they slaughtered babies and burnt them in ovens and cut their heads off and played soccer with it. It's, there are videos on that by themselves because all those terrorists had videos and cameramen behind them and they bragged with these uh, slaughtering to their own uh, uh, family on that same day. This is all recorded. Um, so we want to prevent that and Israel is busy defending themselves but in the process the God's promise of a return wasn't just for the Jews. It also includes a, 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 the return of the major section Actually, in fact, 10 twelfths, 10 over 12 of the original nation, because there were 12 tribes, 10 of them were exiled long before the Jews um, in, in the year 720 before this era, uh, BCE, BC, the Christians will say. Then they were already 10 twelfths, were exiled into oblivion. But those same prophecies that speaks about the rebirth of Israel and the resettlement and the Zionist, doesn't call it a Zionist spirit, but we've made of it a Zionist spirit, uh, that same, those prophecies are, are decorating the Bible. So uh, this is really, sorry to make it biblical for those that don't, don't have much interest in the Bible, but that is what, it's a miracle that Israel exists today it's amongst the top 10, top 10 nations coming from an exile after 2,000 years after the slaughterhouses of the of Hitler, um, and, and, and they, they virtually crawled back to this land and started from scratch. This land was derelict after 2,000 years, having been exposed to the, to the uh, non-Jewish nations, and it became uh, deserts and swamps infested, pest infested swamps. And that is what the Jews came back to from the slaughterhouses of, of, of Hitler. And they started over in 70 years. There we are, top 10 nation. But 10, 12 of the, of the nations are still uh, outside. Why do I emphasize this? We're talking about bringing those people back. And Israel must wake up to this. Those people must come back. The prophecies say so. Same prophecies that say that Israel will be rebuilt. They must come back. Where must they live? Uh, and we need people in the land. So you can see we're opening a hornet's nest by suggesting that Gaza should become a haven for these people. Uh, that, so as I say, what we're suggesting and talking about here is merely talking about it uh, to think that the governments are going to fall backwards to do it is doesn't exist, but it's happening. Israel, if you told somebody 80 years ago in the time of Hitler, where the Jews were six million were killed in his camps, his death camps and slaughterhouses, if you told them Israel is going to be a top nation in 70 years, they, they would have put you in an asylum. It's happened. And the same is going to happen here. So we're talking about what should happen. And this we I see in Gaza. And soon after this, also Lebanon and, and Syria, uh, same thing is going to happen there. They must be repopulated. With who? Who's going to populate these places? Jews? The world doesn't want it. But in any case, there's not all that many Jews. There's 15 million Jews in the world. Nine million a year already. We simply haven't got the numbers to populate those places. But there are millions, multi-millions of non-Jews in the world turning to Torah 
and to Jewish faith, uh, not pushed by the Jews. The Jews don't want them to become Jews. Uh, all miracles we're talking about here. Come back, we're talking about Gaza the day after. What is going to happen? We see in this Gaza repopulation, which the government is 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 struggling with and wrestling with this topic. What are we going to do? There's no solution yet. The world is pushing. Something must happen. And surely it is an opportune time where the whole world is woken up by Gaza war on the 8th of October, realizing that they must select. That is the topic of our of our uh, the subject of our topic here. Yeah, when it when it comes to security, I imagine that most Israelis would probably rather have uh, pro-Israel anything uh, living next uh, next to them alongside their borders rather than what they currently have. Well, uh, the they are uh, they've been researchers and and. Uh, uh, statistics that uh, I think the not I think it's certainly that the majority of the nation has woken up <laughs> having their loved ones slaughtered like animals on the 7th of October can this continue happening remember Israel's been in war with these Palestinians and Arab nations around us for the 70 years that we've been here since God has, has, has brought us back so they, the question, they are very well aware now that as long as these Palestinians live next to us, remember, there the Palestinians, the Hamas constitution says from the river to the sea. What do they mean? <laughs> Clear it from Jews. Eliminate them. That's not genocide. The world doesn't care if they say that. And many of the world will support it. Many of the rulers of the world support it. Yes, it's got to be Palestine. If you put the Israel, the nation has woken up on the 7th of October. And again, as I say, seeing this on the 8th of October to choose. Uh, can we have these murderers living as our neighbors? What will you do if your neighbor is, is, is out to kill your children? And he's a drunkard and an alcoholic and he's got no respect for life. Uh, what are you going to do? You've got to move. So good. Then the Jews must move. Or they must move. Uh, I'll be slaughtered for this, but common sense, please. Yeah, common sense isn't isn't that common uh, apparently these days. <laughs> uh, who do you see as the the main target audience? Um, uh, you know, for this for this vision that that you've published. You know, uh, and what's it going to take for to have a real impact? Um, you know, to help deliver uh, on these on these mm -hmm. goals. Well, at the moment, there's been two major conferences, the one just days ago, by rightists. And the last, uh, the last uh, uh, conference a few days ago, I'm talking about what the end of January, I think it was the 26th in, in Jerusalem, was uh, to the detriment uh, and, and the sadness of, the, of our politicians overseas and those rulers that are pro-Palestinian. This conference was attended by cabinet ministers and, of course, the writers. And the voice there was just Jews must occupy, not occupy, must live, populate is the word. Um, Jews must populate the that the, the Gaza. We can't leave it empty. And again, as I say, with all these options, let's ask the question that has never been faced, and that is, what does the Bible say? What does God expect of this? Why was it written? Why has part of it come out uh, to date miraculously that Israel is a top 10 nation advanced? And why will an arrest not come out? We must listen. We must do it. God doesn't drag people by their ears and put them on stretches and drag them. They came out of Egypt. He brought his people out of Egypt and they weren't fit enough to enter the land. Uh, spiritually, and he sent them back into the desert 40 years. He says, go and find out what it's all about. And then only they could enter. If he wanted to drag them, he could have put them on a, on a cloud and dumped them from Egypt right into Israel. It doesn't happen that way. We must do the walking and the talking and the fighting and the sweating and the bleeding to uh, make these things fulfilled. So that is part of our mission, of this mission, uh, this vision, is to just wake people up to what an alternative, an alternative backed by the Bible. They don't have to believe in the Bible, but uh, 
I mean, there's enough proof that which way this must go. But as I say, it's not we can talk all night, but um, all day. What is going to happen, we don't know. But as sure as Israel was reborn, believe me, in the end, that will happen. The ten twelfths of the nation will return, multi millions of them. They could be a thousand million, one billion people out there that must return. And the world is unknown of this. It's, it's, there's lots of proof. If they just want to read, we can give you lots of proof on that. So, what are your plans or next steps for raising awareness for repopulating Gaza with a pro Israel population after the war? That is the big problem is to get people to put their voices um, onto one common uh, vision, mission statement to say, uh, and what 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 I would think is, is a very easy one is to say, I stand for Israel. And we see this all along. Christian churches uh, by the dozen, uh, you see the photos all day long of with waving Israeli flags. They don't say we want to become Jews or we want to have Judaism. They say we stand with Israel. So probably part of it would be to, to uh, populate these places with people that are keen enough to uh, in that way support Israel to at least see that it won't be cleared from the river to the sea as, as the, the enemy wants. They will help to prevent this. They'll be a friendly nation next to us. They don't have to be Jewish. Um, let them be anything as long as they stand with Israel. If they stand with Israel, remember, they are choosing the option, one of the two options that uh, that came up on 8th of October, choose whether you want to stand with with evil Hamas or uh, the Palestinians who want to clear Jews from this promised land or stand with good. And now I've got to be careful what I say. I'm not trying to pretend that Judah is holy and pure. No, far from it. Ask any rabbi. Certainly we're not. But we're in that position God has placed us back into the land and has got to carry on. We're back to our prophecies and, and it's all happening. Uh, all this must go on. So, yes, we want to raise awakening. Uh, for one thing, we stand with Israel. What does that really mean? Even if they don't understand it, it means let Israel settle the promised land which God promised to, to, uh, to, to Avram as a Jew and to the Gentiles. Uh, people that really side. So even if they don't believe, never read the Bible, what's wrong? We stand with Israel. Great. At least they're not going to kill us. Put Palestinians back there, and most of our nation has woken up on 7 October. Put Palestinians back there. Two-state solution, all these things. It's death. They'll come again, and they'll do worse than on the 7th of October. We don't, it's been done all along. It's not the first massacre of Jews in the streets. Uh, please, uh, we can give you articles there to read too. It's happened every few years uh, for the last, uh, listen, for 2,000 years it's been happening. So what's new? God wants to settle this land as he promised Abram with innumerable masses of people that wants goodness. And his faith is goodness. And you don't have to be a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim or whatever. Just be a good person, okay? And and stop killing people without really reason. Uh, one of the, the issues and problems that Israel faces is what are they going to do with uh, the lack of, of foreign workers coming into the country? Because uh, it's it's been stated that, you know, uh, Palestinian workers from Gaza as well as Judea and Samaria are no longer going to be led into the country, um, you know, for work. So what's Israel going to do to pick up the slack uh, and what bring uh, except except to bring in workers from pro-Israel countries? Uh, and as you know, a lot of our even even a lot of our viewers um, from India and South Africa are, are very pro-Israel and would love nothing but to come to the country and, and work and uh, support in that way. That's right. There's great potential. While you were speaking, I was just thinking uh, from Gaza, uh, thousands of uh, Palestinians came to work in Israel every day. 
Okay, so they had to go through security gates, but if you didn't check them, they would have brought their ammunition and their suicide belts with them. So, yes, they were like prisoners almost uh, cleared at the gate, and then they could come and they could come and work and they could eat, and we paid them good salaries, and, and, and th there was nothing wrong. But now, this was also proven that those same workers they had, they knew the Jewish houses, those that worked as cleaners in houses. They they had all the reports beforehand. They could they could give the uh, Hamas authorities information of where exactly to go, like they did on the seventh of October. Uh, long stories, uh, testimonies of how photographers uh, from from Gaza. They had all the photos. They were free to walk around before and, uh, okay, after they walked through the gate to come into Israel for the day, they could take photos, do what they like. It cannot happen again because the same, they're not going to ask them to change, ask them to make peace with Israel. These uh, foreign rulers that, that, that insist that we must give it to uh, the Palestinians again. They don't understand. Those Palestinians don't live with, want to live with us. They want to clear Jews and believe me, clear them, kill them if possible, or get them into the sea from the river to the sea. Get out. We don't want you here. Why press them for a two state solution to make them sovereign in their own country? They want to take Israel out. And good. It's a quick question. Who can answer it? I'm not trying to say that we can answer it. It's in, unanswerable, but we still got to live in between. And good against evil. Choose good or evil. That's the option of 8th of October. Well, that about wraps it up. As complicated of a situation as it is, it really does boil down to good versus evil. And there is no room for neutrality here. We're not talking about rubber stamp approval for the Israeli government, but if you're unwilling, to side with the IDF and Israel, your only other option are genocidal terrorists. And that's no option at all. It's woken the whole world up because this question is raising in, in most nations. And you see uh, people gathering in the streets on the side of Palestinians. And yes, uh, with flags of Israel, some g gathering, other ga uh, pro Israel groups gather with waving flags for Israel. So there are two sides. You see it every day all over the world. And it's only since 8th of October. Well, thanks, Avadia. We appreciate you coming on. And we will put your contact information up on the screen for our viewers. And we definitely look forward to the opportunity of having you back. I imagine we'll have plenty of opportunities to continue this discussion in regards to what Gaza should look like the day after the war and working towards securing Israel's borders instead of just the opposite. That's right. Get it to grow instead of wiping it out, eliminating it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, any final comments? I just want to say thank you for those who say that may have found, please God, found some sensible ideas in our discussion. And uh, our final request, join us, raise your voice, Stand for Israel. Absolutely. Thanks again. Thank you. Bless you.